I will call the Great Cloud Town Board meeting for July 13th, 2022 to order. First thing is Pledge of Allegiance. Scott Quayle, could you come up to the, do we have our microphone? Right here. And thanks for coming, Scott. Sure. Appreciate it. All good? Yep. Great. My name is Scott Qualley. I am the building official for 24 communities in the greater Twin Cities metro area. And uh, my understanding is that uh, Cottage Grove, we used to provide services for you, was elected not to continue after the end of the year. And uh, we were made aware of that and sent out notices to Newport and you and a couple other communities to let you know that we're available to help if you need that. And a proposal came as a result of that. And I'm now here to follow up on the proposal with any questions you might have. Sure. Did uh, St. Paul Park decide to contract with you also? I think they're waiting to get a little closer to the end, my <laughs> recollection. It it's is not fly, far, it's not not far, that away. far away. And their code enforcement has stopped. Right, and we're doing code enforcement for Newport currently, oh. know, with the expectation that that's going to carry on. So, Well, I will make that motion to have you do our code enforcement right now. Scott, is that something you could start soon? Sure. Oh. I mean, we've got, we have staff that does just code enforcement. Okay. So, you know, we could, when would a you? month or something, we could kind of, we have to pick a date, but we, whatever we sure. pick a date, we've just got to get it done. I think the first of the month is good. Okay. Do we, uh, have the, has there been a contract drafted yet? Not specifically, okay. just, just for code enforcement. Okay. Yep. So we yeah. could, you know, we'll, uh, if you want to move ahead, we'll get a contract ready and get it down here. Yeah, I'd like to move ahead by the first of the year. What about building inspection? Well, that's not till right till January first. Oh, okay. I'll second your motion then. Uh, any any questions on that motion? All in favor, say aye. Hang on. Aye. Aye. I haven't seen a uh, proposal. How much is it? Well, you just gave us thing about hourly rate and stuff on here. Oh, I, I don't. I didn't have it. You want to see that? You want to pass it off? Yeah, it, just for my. Just tell us what it is. Well, there's a whole bunch of line well, items on there. It. Depending what they do. I believe it's generally eighty-five dollars an hour. I believe is the bulk of the work that gets done. True. Code enforcement is ninety. Yeah. Ninety. Yeah. Okay. That's different than building inspection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, um, you know, we have a couple of houses that are in uh, rough shape <clears throat> with that's issues. Not control huh? No. No. And it's complaint basis and as requested. Right, we're not going to be driving around looking for violations. And Correct. No, we'll, call yeah. us, we're going to come down and take yep. care of it. That's yep. how it's going to be. Thank you. I think all our complaints would go through the clerk to you, yep. not just to have. Right, exactly. We don't, we don't want a resident or someone outside of the community to call us and say, you need to go or whatever. That's all got to come to yeah, the they, community first. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't accept any of those. Yeah. It's got to be. We, gotta don't, be, we don't want anyone else spending your money. Got to be heard. <laughs> No, you want you want Scott to continue with information about building inspection, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm sorry. I, I used to do sales when I was kind of did everything, and now we're kind of divided up our stuff. And I tried to call Al on the way down, and he wasn't available. So we've given you just a proposal for code enforcement at the moment. 
Well, no, you've given us proposal for building proposal. inspection and okay. code enforcement. Okay. Yeah, and we'll we'll wait on the building inspections to to make a motion probably around the end of November. Maybe the, the November, November meeting. The November meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, a few years ago, someone from Inspect was here and gave us a presentation. They talked about. Um, with a computer automated yep. system where I could just submit. Um, here's the information. Someone submitted a building permit application. Yep. And like for roofs and <coughs> siding and windows. So kind of things. And I remember being here. It's been quite a while. Okay. You know, life has changed since. Uh, I think that was pre-COVID, actually, as right. I recall. Right. Yep. Um, the I sold the business. I think the proposal came from. Uh, safe built, safe and inspect is still an entity. It's just owned by somebody besides me. Same staff at the office and yeah. doing the same thing we used to do. Uh, but one of the things that was attractive about safe built was that they come with a software package that's A, free to the community, and B, allows a, a public portal option so that if someone wants to pull a permit for roofing, um, they can do so online and the payment goes to you directly, the fees are added on. And, you know, all that's taken care of, and you just get an acknowledgement email that, you know, somebody got a permit for whatever. And if they come in and drop something off and it doesn't need to go to the board like a, a basement remodel, they could either potentially do that and submit those documents online, give them to you, you can scan them and send them to us, do the preliminary data entry, and it just jumps into our queue and gets processed that way. So it makes the need to drive back and forth um, much less significant to the work that we do. We've got to be here for inspections, but the plan review and the initial stuff that starts to process off doesn't need to be quite as hands-on as it used to be as it used to be in the past. So that's helpful. It streamlines streamlines the process and eliminates days of wait for pick up and drop off and things like that. So when the building permit is issued, do you send that to the homeowner online? Well, so the I, I am still struggling with how we're going to make the technology piece, the elect, the idea of delivery of electronic plans, something that works for everybody. And I don't think it it does work for everybody just yet. So in some of our communities, we will mail or courier or not UPS, but Speedy, the plans to the township for you to be able to issue them if that's how you want to handle it. Or uh, they could be delivered with the first inspection or uh, they could be electronically delivered with the expectation that they're going to print them out on a size big enough for us all to be able to read it, maybe with reading glasses, um, to be able to do the inspections when we get there. So there are some options with that, but again, that can facilitate uh, a great deal of the, um, the transit issues that have always plagued uh, this business. And even if it got done this morning, it may not get back here until tomorrow because it's got to go in someone's car and then they got to come over here the next time we're over here. And, all that stuff. We've always tried to always try to do those deliveries within a day, but sometimes it's a long day from eight one day to four o'clock the next day. So this speeds that up quite a bit. So if somebody applies for a permit, um, does a normal permit then you guys give out? Does that come with like a deadline for completion of project or to follow through with these? So I've got one comment and one suggestion. And the suggestion would be if you have a problem with people not finishing projects, yep. which every community does at, at some level or another. Uh, there's a tested ordinance that's been used by Mound and it went to the state Supreme Court and was determined to be valid. You can pass an ordinance that says if you get a permit to affect the outside of a building, whether you're constructing something new or whether you're doing an addition or you're residing or whatever, you must finish the outside within 180 days. And you want to take two years to do the inside, that's fine. Now, the building permit will expire six months after the work is suspended or abandoned. So we, the only way we have to determine that is if we haven't been called for another progress inspection. So you know, we start off with footings and then foundation and then a pre-backfill inspection and, and then we've got framing and the rough ends that go with that and then we get to the final and the finals that go with that. So if we haven't had an inspection in six months, it's kind of a red flag. We send out a postcard or an email now that says, hey, we notice that your permit is coming up on six months. Uh, if you're still working, let us know. We, you know, we can send you an extension, and you can request it, and we'll grant it, and you can go on for six more months. Otherwise, the permit expires just by limitation, is what the code says okay. about that. So six months is the theory, theoretical 
work time, but if you get an inspection or make progress every six months, you could theoretically stretch a project out for four years or five years. Okay. I don't want to advertise yeah, that, but no. it's something that could happen. But if you've got the ordinance that says you've got to finish the outside within yeah. 180 days, at least you're not pissing off the neighbors and having something that looks bad on the outside with house wrap flapping in the wind and whatever. So Okay. And you get like an alert or you get, so it's not something that has to be followed up on? No, you, the computer see will that? tell us okay. when we're at five and a half months and let us know and we can, you know, batch process okay. and send out those communications. So Perfect. it's pretty easy to do. That'd be nice. Is there a way to get a copy of that ordinance? Absolutely. Or a, okay. Yeah, we'll send it off. Uh, uh, do, yeah. Okay. If you can send it, that'd be great. But if not, I'll be telling. Perfect. I think send it to Cheryl and she can piece it out. Finding connection. Pull in. It's really it's like two sentences. It's not super complicated. Well, it just handle, says if you pull, a, if you pull a permit that requires exterior improvements, you must yeah. finish them in 180 days. Okay. Or something. It's very simple. Yeah. So, now yeah, you still have state thing. state electrical would still be our electrical, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do yep. electrical inspections, yep. so that would be that would yep. stay with your okay. current provider, which I assume is the state electrical inspector. Yep. Okay. And then, is there anything else you need from me with regards to communications between now and? November with regards to building inspections. Um, do we have we have the building inspections proposal? We have a proposal for both. For both. Okay. It includes both. Yeah. Okay. I'll request a contract tomorrow for the okay. code enforcement. Great. And we'll try and get that processed and through the process and back here. And once you sign it, we're ready to go. If that's before August first, great. We'll see you soon. We got some fun yeah. properties. <laughs> so Tracy Ryman is our uh, code enforcement manager, um, and he'll probably be the one that'll be interacting most with the township. Okay. But you know, you should know that I'm always around. I'm always here. If you need me, I'm sure I'm here for that. So okay. thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you all. Well, thanks, Scott. All appreciate cards, so you appreciate, appreciate you coming by. You bet. Okay. That'll be, that'll be good too. Thanks. <clears throat> Okay, next order of business, approval of the minutes from June 8th. Could I have a motion on that? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 8th. Second that. Motion to be made and seconded to uh, approve the minutes from June 8th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Treasurer's report. We'll go through the June financial statement. We had a beginning balance of the checking of 34265 Expenses of $6,295 and revenue of $65,733 for an ending balance of $93,704. Our uh, UBS funds, they came down again for I think the third month in a row, unfortunately. Uh, they're, they're all in extremely low risk uh, uh, assets, but it's still coming down. Expenses were uh, down because we had uh, Rumpka last year, uh, but we did have an assessor this year, so it offset that a little bit. And then revenue was up purely because the tax levy hit a few days, usually it hits in July. That came in June this year. Cool. So halfway through the year, if you look at the balances on the bottom, we're, we're a little over half spent on general purpose. Uh, we're kind of right on on public safety. And then road and bridge were a little over half spent, uh, but we've we've we're running ahead on. Uh, we've collected I guess a little over half the revenue for the for the budget too. And I think I told you guys last time, Cheryl and I met with the county, and we're, we'll be getting a, about a twenty-four thousand dollar or something like that. We did get it. It's is it in here? It's in there. Yep. Perfect. 
for uh, overpayment of, of uh, salt and sand for a few years. Good word. So. How'd that get so screwed up? It's a long Remember? story, but they had, a, they had a second, a separate process that ended up being double counted on mm. a lot of our, not every plow, but a lot of our plows were double counted. Okay. So mm. they kept the old one and then they had a new process and they didn't, they didn't catch it. For a while. Okay. And there was a turnover too. So. Well, thanks Cheryl for getting a hold of me. I know that was a lot of work. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Nope. I'll make a motion to approve treasurer's report. Second it. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the treasurer's report. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Time who, to pay the bills. Who made, who made the motion? I'm sorry. Me. He, yeah. He second. Okay, thank you. <laughs> make the <a> motion. <laughs> Okay, let's pay the bills. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to pay bills 89 through 110 for a grand total of $39,747.82. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the bills. Any com comments? Cheryl's number 93, is that two, two months worth? Yes. Okay. Once a year. Because they bill every four weeks instead of monthly. Once a year we get another an extra bill. Okay. In our grass mowing, I think that was eight times? Yes. That was on it's not on this sheet, but it was on a different one we had. Right. Yeah. So uh, hearing no questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Along with that, I, I, Scott, I was talking, to, I was looking online and today on the ARPA funds we get, I was talking to Cheryl, and I think you two got it all figured out, but I, was, I didn't sit and read the whole, watch the whole thing from Minnesota Association of Townships, <coughs> but they made it out like you had to have it in a separate fund, you know, like, like don't move money out of that into roads and then spend it, just spend it out of the ARPA fund to, to do the roads or the police or whatever. And I was wondering, to make it simple so we don't have more expenditures, we can spend it on anything, would it make sense to pay our police uh, quarterly bill out of that? Just for bookkeeping for you two. Because it'd only, it only take one or two payments. I mean, either way we pay it and you can do it out of anything. So does that, well, what you guys- tell you, do we have to, at the end of the year, then report how we spent it? Is that the deal? I didn't look. Because right now I just submit something each year to the state and they don't really... No, I have to submit a report. I already submitted for this year. Because of our size and the amount of money we received, we only have to file once a year to report if we spent anything and what we spent it on. Okay. So I've already filed for this year. Um, it was, I don't remember when it was due, but mm -hmm. a month or so ago. Um, so it won't have to be filed until I think April of next year. I was just thinking if it makes it easy for you, just pay the police thing with it. Just one or two payments, it'd be all gone. It's fine. You wouldn't have it's to worry about it. one checking account, so whatever you want. Well, I'm just, you two would know what's, you know, after watching that thing, how you got to keep, they made it look like you had to, you didn't have to have it in a separate bank account, but you had to have it as like a separate line item, ARPA funds. You can pay anything you wanted out of it. Okay. I but think fine. that's if you have, is it called ETAS? that accounting, and we don't use that, it, because they have like numbers assigned to different categories and stuff. It could be that. But yeah, anyway, I'm just just sure. something to think about. It might be easy, make it simple, make life simple, instead of trying to figure out what we'd spend it on, what have you. All right, thanks. Okay, move on. Uh, reports of committee. Committees and meetings and events, planning commission report. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. And we've had a couple of representative supervisors that were there at the meeting, so if I'm omitting or forgetting anything, by all means, jump on. And we met this past Monday. It was a meeting almost as popular as this one. We're very well attended. We had just uh, formal formalities and um, a couple of action items, one of which is being uh, presented to you for uh, we're recommending your approval. A, I, uh, I Create Industries submitted an administrative uh, mining permit. I believe you all have it. Um, that they wanted to amend the, the 2022 administrative permit to mine a portion of the lower bench. And I'm just reading south of the town hall. It does not change the acreage um, or open up new acreage, acreage, I should say, I'm sorry. And um, that does not include the number or um, uh, improve the uh, number of blasts or the tonnage for the extraction. I also believe they submitted one, um, a couple of maps of sort of the old and the new, the order or the, the pathway in which the mining was kind of going to take place will go instead of north to south, it'll go from south to north. And I may be saying this wrong, but one of the intended uh, reasons for that is to redirect the blast in a, in a more appropriate or perhaps efficient um, pathway. That was discussed, very well represented. We made clear that um, the only thing that was being changed on that permit was actually just a direction and then um, some of the zone and then we're recommending that for your approval. That was one of the items. I mistakenly thought that there were two, but it was just one and the same. Um, either Dan or Dick, any, any other comments on that or any anybody else that was at the meeting? Good. The other item that we have, we have been asked to take a look at, and the clerk distributed the variance request, additional information is what we labeled it. We have received some new maps. Um, I believe they have different setbacks represented in them. They're the byproduct of a visit that you did to the, to the um, related to the variance request. We were going to have a discussion around that, but um, we heard from AI that given the context of the hearing, the public hearing that was still in session, that we should not have a discussion on this topic or hear any other public comment because we didn't know or they, or uh, Patty said that, uh, that it may violate the public hearing rules. Uh, we didn't have the benefit of having the clerk there, so we didn't know for sure whether or not we could discuss it. Um, being on the uh, cautious side, we opted not to have any discussion because the, the next agenda item we had was from Ted that wanted to give some feedback on the variance request um, opinions or perspectives. But we refrained from any of that discussion at the request, Patty, given that we didn't have really legal advice or the clerk at the meeting to suggest otherwise. So I just want to, for the record, sort of reflect that there was no discussion on the topic other than presenting the new maps that um, were made available to us. We reviewed them and um, took no action on them. Is that your recollection? Yep. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. not mine. I wasn't there. But yeah. yeah, I just wanted you yeah. to know. And that yeah. given the timing of the minutes when we prepare them, when we present them, such action will be formally provided once the minutes of the meeting are approved at the next meeting. See, we meet on Monday. We prepare minutes, but we until we meet again, we don't really approve them in order to be um, active. So we'll we'll submit them next time. We're always one month behind your meeting okay. uh, to to follow our process to make sure that the minutes are reflective of the discussion. Hopefully that makes sense. Well, thank you, Eduardo. Then, yep. Um, apologize for my absence, but I would not have known off the top of my head the answer to your question, but. Um, the township attorney says you have every right to review that. Got it. And and we didn't know. I don't. I don't want to sound either negative or in, in any way limiting the discussion. We were just not in the know on whether or not that discussion could be had. Patty made a good argument. We did not want to err on the side of having a discussion that was, for whatever reason, not formalized as appropriate. And given the fact that we had the presence of a couple of supervisors and that can get complicated quickly, we just refrained from it. I, I mean, I don't know if that's part of the agenda today to perhaps hear some of that additional feedback. We just didn't know and um, also not put anything on you. Given the fact that you weren't there either, we just kind of said, uh, 
It's just not going to engage. Yeah, it's not. It's not on the meeting agenda. It yeah. was well. It was on their meeting agenda. Yeah. And yeah. the attorney said, as long as it was on the agenda, you had every right to discuss it. Got it. And that hindsight is twenty twenty. The the reason why it was on the agenda is because the the new maps were obviously new evidence. And then we have received in writing some feedback from uh, Ted, one of the residents that's impacted by one of the variances. We not write up, and I know you've seen. We just didn't know whether or not we could discuss it or not, because what we were going to give is Ted the opportunity to go through those points and have the planning commission mm -hmm. hear that out. So, my opinion is, what Ted had to bring forward should be brought to the hearing. And that, and that was. Uh, that was a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some feedback from Ted to say, well, that the day of the hearing may be the day of the decision, how some of that can be evaluated, and that made sense. Bottom line is that we just didn't discuss it from a, from the record perspective. We didn't have a discussion on it, whether or not he wants to bring it up today as just an additional um, agenda item to the meeting in order to give that that uh, document some um, air. That will be his call. So, we didn't discuss it, and that was the third item on the agenda. We did not talk about the IUP and the uh, build-in permit uh, timelines. I'm relieved to hear that there's probably a process that we can put in place to at least finish the outside and not be adversely affecting any neighbors on unfinished projects. So that's that's music to our ears. We'll follow up on that item. Call the meeting to uh, ending, and, um, and that's the report from the, the planning commission. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Eduardo. Okay, go ahead and stay around. I'd like to bring up some additional information. The reason for the 60 days to extend that public hearing was for the township to gather information, have meetings, uh, bring information forward. Not have meetings. Not well, have well meetings. the planning commission. The planning commission meetings in order to discuss this uh, variance request at their regular meetings, not separate meetings. Okay. And they were doing that. They had their meeting Monday uh, night. No, town board member. Uh, the, the planning commission has every right to review the maps. Right. It is not. Um, it's the game. It's input. not another format for you to discuss what should be discussed at the hearing. It, public couldn't have impact. Public couldn't talk, right? They could communicate about it, but they couldn't take public input on it or not. I think that's what. Well, no, YouTube, YouTube could not discuss no. it. And, I mean, other than reviewing the maps, you had every right to do that. If, uh, if someone from the public has something um, that they want to input, um, it says right on the, excuse me, meeting notice. You can send it to the clerk before the hearing. You can bring it to the hearing. But they could have had input at the planning commission meeting, correct? No, it, no. But the planning commission could discuss it amongst themselves. They could review the maps. Right. They can review the maps. Yeah. And all that was stopped at aggregate's request. Oh, can I interject here? Sure. Uh, reviewing the map, we didn't have an issue with the planning commission reviewing the map. You had asked me for six copies of it, I knew it was for the planning commission as well as the town board. What I objected to was that the planning commission had on their agenda um, perspective from neighbor or Ted Brees, and that I knew was supposed to be right. safe for the public hearing, not to be heard by the planning commission or at, in that, at that meeting venue. It was to be at the public hearing. That's what I was objecting to. Not they, I didn't have an issue. I distributed the maps, so I didn't have an issue with looking at the maps. What I had an issue with, with was receiving public comment. That's not quite the way you made it at the well, meeting. I wouldn't have distributed the maps. Yeah, finished. the planning commission didn't even get a chance to. I, and what I said is, no, they had a chance to look at the maps. What I said is that they they don't vote on variances per se. Right. Right. But basically, you kind of put them behind a month because they didn't get anything accomplished the other night, really. There was nothing for them to do. They, they voted to move it on to you folks. Actually, they took no action the other and, night. And actually, Cheryl said that it was for their review only. Yeah, they, were not yeah they, did. They, they recommended the... Uh, so two that was for the mining permit yeah. amendment. Yeah. 
Yeah, that I would was say it was, not it was for handled, the variance. handled good and we all received the maps and stuff so they can show up at the next meeting. We are done with that caution. And I think what Dick's trying to say is it's really hard to just go 60 days and then not be able to really discuss or ask questions. Yeah, what good are the 60 days if our planning awesome. commission can't discuss it? So the way that it I... Makes, it makes no sense to me why... The, why planning, you know, the planning commission does not sit as the board of review for a variance. The town board sits as, as the board of review for a variance. But the planning commission looks at all the information and makes a recommendation. The, the, my understanding of it, and, and I think that, again, this is hindsight. We didn't have the discussion, so I think from the point forward, any process you want to establish to gather input and have other for um, other um, uh, channels of input is something that you control. My understanding of it, of it is that Ordinance 52, which manages the Planning Commission role and function and outlines sort of what we do, does not, and I said this at the meeting, does not explicitly call variance request approval, but it does explicitly call anything else germane to that process that you ask us to do. So if you ask the Planning Commission to look at a specific item of a variance, or you specifically say, this is what I want you to do, you've got the authority to delegate that to us for us to investigate the piece, or give you feedback, or give you input. The piece that was confusing, at least to me, is that we do have a review process for your hearing. And whether or not that constitute a hearing element or not, it's not something that we knew, and we didn't want to err on taking any input mm -hmm. or making that, that conversation a hearing-bound um, activity that may need recording or who knows what, or notification. We were not sure, we just didn't want right. to go into it. Right. One of the things that I think we can clarify in the future, should you decide to, and we'll bring this up, is do you want us to amend that ordinance to include variances? From here on out, when a variance shows up, mm -hmm. it starts with the Planning Commission and it's really, really clear. Um, uh, supervisor Dan made a really good point. What if somebody has the permit that requires the variance? Does that mean that you're not you're going to review the permit request, but not the variance element of it? This doesn't seem to me to make any sense. To your point um, of what should you, what is the process within those 60 days, 90 days, 30 days, whatever it may be, for you to gather and or have other, uh, other conversations? I think that's explicit direction on saying at these points we want to meet probably as a group and consider other in, in input and information. That particular meeting was probably not the channel, given the fact that it had not been explicitly uh, notified that that would be where some of these items would be discussed. Where I personally, and I don't know if there's a statutory element of it, I don't know if that is what Patty said is valid or not, is that any public hearing on any given time, there's an element called open forum that's part of it, that any citizen on any topic that is legal and um, professionally presented can say anything they want. So if Ted Rees wants to come to any meeting and say, I would like to be as part of the open forum, give you input on the way that I see the world, you're supposed to give him three to five minutes in order to make that point. So whether or not he would have been able to provide input on his perspective on a variant requ various request to a planning commission, I think legally, there's no way that we could say, no, we're not gonna take that input. <coughs> given the fact that we, that, that at this point, you're into a hearing extension, and we just didn't want to do it to not compromise the process. Am I making sense? Yep. Okay. Perfect sense. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know we. Don't I understand what you're saying. I disagree. Okay. I'm not a lawyer. I, I think this is something that your attorney should clarify for you folks, um, because my I've had public hearings before and other municipalities, and if they're continued, the public only speaks at the public hearing. Correct. They are not allowed to speak outside of that to board members or to voice their opinions. At that public hearing, that is why the public hearing is held. And in this instance, when I handed out the maps on Monday evening, and I had been instructed by Cheryl, I asked her how many copies. She said, bring six, I got six. Dan, Dick, all the planning commission members received one, and I, um, said that it was for the variance hearing, which had been continued from June 1st to August 17th, and the revisions to the map, I informed them, had been at the town board's request. One of the um, changes to the map was requested by you folks, you three, at the town board, or at the variance hearing on June 1st, 
The other request was made by Dick Polta at an on-site meeting, which your attorney advised you folks to have at the June 1st hearing. Mm -hmm. So that's what the changes to the map were. I informed that to the planning commission. Um, yeah, but the first the inconsistency in that argument, you as the applicant can provide additional information and nobody else can. So we that, did, that, we did it at the board's request. No, the, the maps that were provided were completely changed at none of our requests. We asked, for, we asked for footages to be put on the map, which would be adding a line. We didn't ask for red lines to get changed. We didn't ask for new stuff. You, you did change the maps. That's the only thing that changed. So if we would have got a 500 foot from Ted Reese's property like we asked for on a map, on this new map, this, the old one that you guys applied, this all changed. On your guys' application, this goes like this. Yeah, because one of you has to have that room. No, we asked to have, we no. asked for the number. One of them on the, on the county road. We don't have to argue about it. Right. Tip to be we didn't, and no. You also asked for this to be put we in. asked for confirmation that it was 500 feet from Ted Reese's property. Yeah. That was the only comment that was made. Uh, so when you guys applied, and it wasn't 500 feet, you guys took initiative to change that on your own. These were brand new to us, all to surprise at the walkthrough. But yeah. <coughs> regardless, it's done and over. That's fine. We don't need to go back and forth on it. Yep. I disagree. So those are, to, yep. You know, I can have Tom. Tom I, when we met at the walkthrough, Tom presented the new change maps to us. We hadn't asked him for them prior to that. Tom gave it to us he at the site visit. Courtesy, well, I don't care how he... No, not at that time. We asked for the changes after that. But then when we met him at the site visit, he gave I us different I can maps. send everyone the recording, and you can listen to it. Um, but anyway, would you be willing to grant us an additional 30 days seeing this got all screwed this up is, on our hearing? This is not the forum no. for it. No. Well, I can ask. You have to wait for the hearing. Okay. So let's... Move on. Forward. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, the next planning commission meeting is Monday, August 8th at 6.30. The next town board meeting is Wednesday, August 10th at 7. The variance hearing for AI continuation is Wednesday, August 17th. You skipped the mitigation? Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll do that next. Okay. So, um, on Monday, I met with uh, Kelly Matzek with Washington County Emergency Management. She's the emer Emergency Management Deputy Director. And we met here at the town hall. <clears throat> and um, they do this every five years. They update a mitigation plan, if we have one. Uh, and then uh, they come to the cities and townships like she did. Um, and just, just meeting with her uh, meant that we were participating. Um, now, Ray had been working on a mitigation plan, but he only got it in draft form. He was going to send it to me. Um, did he send it to you, Cheryl? No, I have not okay. received it. He might not. He might. It might not be available to him. But I would like to put together a mitigation plan that would just have, you know, what we do in a flood. What should we do? What we do uh, with storm damage? What should we do? And what do we do with these airplanes that are dropping out of the sky? Um, it's rare, but it does happen. I mean, we just had the one in this, this spring. And, you know, we've had one on, um, on the trail, went through some pine trees, propeller fell off and landed in the field, didn't hit the power lines, and they walked away from it. It, it was pretty good. Um, and then we had one hang up in the, the power lines over here a few, few years back, and we had a we had a uh, steerman was doing stunts under you know under the radar, and it was down on the cottage row side of the river, and 
they landed in the water. And it, you know, I mean, it's very rare, and I, I probably won't ask for that to be in the because it's so rare. But we are on the flight path of, of Whiplanger. We're on the flight path of Fleming Airfield. So, I mean, a lot of planes do, small planes come by here. I mean, they go right over my, Whiplinger goes right over my house. And, um, you know, we expect those to be in really good condition and, and all this stuff, and they've been through all their, because some of these float planes are 50 years old, but, you know, they get modified, they get, uh, they get taken care of very well. Um, you know, that's, that's the rules. And uh, anyways, so I don't think I'll have the, the planes in it. But one of the things that we did discuss, and she, she wrote it down, was um, uh, added funding for the new town hall if we put a storm shelter in it. Um, you know, and that's, we could get, get some other funding from the county too to help pay for it. So I won't get her report until um, probably January, uh, but I would like to put together um, with the, with the work group, maybe with the planning commission next meeting, uh, mitigation plan that would include, it, it would include uh, floods and, and storm damage. Airplanes are uh, pretty. The only thing I would say, and I don't know if this is the, the right document to put it in, but Fleming, or no, not Fleming, Whiplinger, they don't seem to know what the 500 foot rule is that they have to maintain 500 feet of elevation over houses and private property. Well, their landing strip they can is land in the water. The river. They don't have to have get down over the house until they come the long way into the river. They don't have a right to get down <coughs> within 500 feet of your rooftop. Well, I'm not going to make a complaint. <clears throat> but see, that's what I said. I don't know if this is if you if they want to build into this, you know, safety plan mention of that, or if it's, it requires it, because it's already an FAA rule. It's not like we have to reinvent the wheel on that. But uh, uh, it, they could mention it in there just to put everybody on, on notice that you got to maintain your elevation over private property. How high are they over your house? Oh, sometimes 150 feet. I can attest to that. They're, they're right before they hit their his house, they find out the line very low, very low. Yeah, they got some loud motors and some turbo props. And they take a couple of loops. So they come around and then come around. Or I don't know. Well, they're touch, they're and, go or touch and go practice. They got to do three of those. Yeah, but the, the, the river is that's their landing strip. They can come mm -hmm. from the north or the south. They can do the whole. That's not a problem. Well, they can't interrupt Fleming's flight path either. I know. So they're, they're, they're kind of cornered in that little shore. Just because they can't get lined up with the river. They are able to get lined up with the river and still comply with Fleming. They've been doing it for years. But every once in a while they get a little cocky. Well, I'll, I'll think about that. Anyway, that's... Uh, the end of the report. Oh, one thing I did ask her to do is, uh, we used to get, do uh, you guys get an email on uh, flood reports? No. When they start in the spring? We used to get those. And they quit doing that. I get them on my own from the, med, uh, from the core, just because I used to work there. I get them from Dick. <laughs> yeah, he gets them for me. Toss me a beer, but them to me. Okay, all right. Because okay. I've got a contact here from 
from the National Weather Service, and that she was going to get me his phone number. Okay. And that might not happen until January, but that would be perfect timing, you know. Okay, enough said on a mitigation plan update. And any other uh, committees, meetings, or events? Hearing none, we'll move to unfinished business. Short-term rentals. Um, you, you're, okay, okay. Let's move on to 2022 20, road repairs. You can go, you can go. You can do that. You haven't done much. <laughs> Hang out. We got a hold of uh, Pine Bend Paving, went for a little road trip, um, kind of did some things. And I think kind of the avenue we're looking at doing is trying to get like a budget or a motion approved to do some T&M patchwork type stuff. Um, a lot of these contractors are way out on work and um, really hard with that kind Too of stuff. Too late in the year. Yeah, any big projects, they're not, no one's even taking anything on. Um, right. so I don't know what, yeah, you wanna? Well, basically the amount of work we got to do is so small. Uh, I mean, we're looking at probably five, $6,000 worth to try and write up a scope of work Make sure you get exactly what you want done. Get somebody to bid it. You know, for a blacktop outfit, you know, anything less than about fifty thousand dollars ain't really interesting. Give you a, a straight price unless it's a driveway or something like that. Not running around the road filling potholes. So when me and Dan met with him, what he suggested uh, we do is on the inside curve of the uh, island drive down here, grind out and fill in the crummy areas there. Uh, up on the other end where Pioneer Road meets uh, Island Drive, same thing on that inside curve, grind out some of that. It's a pothole down on 105th Street. And that was about it for the blacktop part, to grind it out and fill in. But then there's a bunch of shoulder work, need some class five put along the shoulder, a bunch of areas. And he, he, we agreed with him that it was best just come and do it, send us a bill, you know, just don't rip us off too bad. And really, a lot of times that's cheaper than be like calling a and plumber and asking them pine bend paving. Oh, okay. Be like calling a plumber out to your house and ask them how much to put a faucet in. Well, it's cheaper to have them come with the faucet in than try and get a price on it and have them come back. The only thing he asked us to do is go along the street and mark where we want shouldering material done. When do you think they'll get here? He gave us no idea. It'd just be a spare job thing, in between oh, jobs, something like that. Kind of yeah, he figured a one day job for a crew. And he, he estimated what, no more than, well, he didn't really say no more. What's it? What's it? He was that thinking it'll be less than 5,000 bucks for yeah, kind of everything we kind it? of looked at. We just figured Pine Bend's a reputable company. I yeah, mean, they're yeah, going to do, do yeah. good. And if, you know, and then he was going to put together some bids for. He, he did. Uh, I got that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For some of the roads, for bigger projects that we could talk okay. about for next the year. The 5,000 ain't on this paper. Why don't I have that? Must have been in the email. Oh, there it is. There. Total repairs should not exceed 5000 unless the scope of the work is increased. Well, we might have a little more shouldering stuff than he thought. So, yeah. I don't know. you want to go with me and him some yep. night and mark stuff up? Yep. Well, then yep. we'll get a hold of you some night and we'll drive around, spray paint the road. Sure. Okay. So, anyway, anybody got any questions on that? To the 99th part of the shouldering? Right over here? Yeah, no blacktop on it, just class five in there. Okay. They're gonna, okay. that's one of the roads that's getting a price or whatever that we're getting information yeah. on for maybe the next two we're years here. or something, but we're we'll here. see, yeah. Pass them down. Now these, just to give you people an idea, now these are just ballpark figures he gave us because we said just, you know, give us an idea of what something would cost. I'm just curious, this uh, 99th Street, right across the street here, grind that all out and fill it back in and put blacktop. Anybody want to take a guess, other than Casey, <laughs> how much that would cost? Come on, somebody throw out a wild number here. 95,000. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. What's the other one? 150. No, 79,000. I read the wrong one. Take it back. Okay. Now I already let the cat out of the bag. 105th Street was 95,000. That included the two little jog portions of it. But them are just ballpark figures. That's not, that's not a set in stone price. I'm just give you an idea 
what stuff costs and why we ask for money for roads and stuff like that. So one of you is going to... Yeah, I'll make a motion we okay. go with this thing with Pine Bend Paving. I'll second that. Motion I made and seconded to go with Pine Bend Paving for that not to exceed... Are you going to include a... Yeah, not to exceed. Not to exceed. Well, don't put the not to exceed, because if we put more shoulder stuff in there, then we're screwed up. Okay. Just go. So the motion, motion is read. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. And Cheryl, are you going to email him and tell him to go ahead whenever they want to? He'll know what to do? Yeah, they know what to do. And they're going to contact me or Dan prior to getting here so we okay. get the road marked. All right. Yeah. Okay, next unfinished uh, item is building inspections and code enforcement. We already had that. Can we, is there anything new with animal control? Is that something we can add into that or not really? Um, well, there's an other down here. Okay. Uh, in new business. New business. We have uh, resolution. Resolution resolution two o two two o six. A resolution appointing election judges for the August 9th, 2022 state primary election. Um, anybody want me to read all the whereases? There's only three. Who are they? Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, on the back here. Okay, here they are. Joe Miller. Co-head election judge, Lynn Utech, she's here, election judge. Amy Shaw, election judge. Lori Kurzweski, is she here? Election judge. Josh Whalen Wallen, election judge. And Tabitha Wallen, election judge. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's who they are. I'll make a motion to um, pass resolution 202206, resolution appointing elected judges for the August 9th, 2022 state primary election. Do you want me to read the names in the motion or? Okay. I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, adopt resolution 202206. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Motion carries. All right. The next one is a request to amend admi the administrative mining permit with what uh, Eduardo had told us. It's back here. The lower shelf. Uh, I have, could I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second it. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, for the request to amend the administrative mining permit. All in favor? Aye. I'd like to talk about that for a minute. That, okay. Go you ahead. know, we could kick this down the road a month if we wanted to. Damn. You know, seeing what happened Monday night was not necessarily in our favor. I didn't think we were treated that wonderful. You people showed up late to give that information to the Planning Commission, which was brought up by Eduardo. So we could be just total non-cooperative and say, you know, we need to study this for another 30 days. But I don't like playing that game. I'd sooner be upfront and honest. So, Could I ask, I'm sorry, I sure. Ask well, I think the Planning Commission uh, should have been able to do what they wanted to do. But anyway. I was told by your town clerk <coughs> that they were there to review the maps. It was for informational purposes only, and she can contradict, she can 
Yeah, but our attorney told us they could have talked about anything they wanted. No, no, they can't yeah. talk. Oh. No, they, they can he said they had every right to review the maps. Yeah. Oh. They did. They didn't have a right to, yeah. to vote on it is what I was trying to get at. And right. Nor did a public, a, a resident have the right to speak on mm. public hearing. Understood. But a public resident could have spoke under other. Not about the variance when it's going to be covered up. No, it's no. A, a, every, all that has to be on the 17th. I would say open forum. Somebody could say anything they wanted. And your proper sh response would be that is for the public hearing. You mm -hmm. can turn your comments in to the clerk in written format prior, or you can show up at the hearing. Okay. Okay, let's load a vote on this thing then. Huh? We already did. We already did. Okay. We didn't. No, we all, didn't. We, all I interrupted your vote. Oh. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Anything else? How about animal control uh, authority? So, before the meeting started, I was going through the dangerous dog definitions. Without provocation inflicted substantial bodily harm on a human being on public or private property. That happened. So the uh, and this is this is two dogs, by the way. How? Yeah, yeah. Question now. Yeah, I'm confused on this thing. I thought only one dog bit somebody. The <laughs> one dog. Go ahead. Well. Sure. Not with 100% certainty, but with 90% certainty, the small dog attacked the woman, biting her in multiple places. And so that's when we sent out a dangerous dog declaration. Right, but the shepherd initiated it. When I got back, the attorney wanted to have a conversation with the victim. So I set that up. Township attorney, myself, and the victim had a conversation. Um, and this is because I mentioned to him that the police report identifies a different dog. Yeah. So he wanted to talk to the victim. And then it was obvious to him two dogs were involved. And she could not say what the second dog did. She knew the second dog was present, but she was already in shock at that point. Um, However, the witnesses that stopped to help her um, identified that dog, um, said that he came at them, um, you know. The, uh, the shepherd. The shepherd, yeah, that he came at them. Um, and then the victim wasn't clear what his involvement was at that point. But coming at a person you'll find in the, in the ordinance, is a potentially dangerous dog, so the attorney instructed me. The person was walking a dog, too, just so you know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just yeah. so, yeah, just yeah. so, yeah. right, yeah. I know, just so people know it wasn't a person just walking, there was a dog with it, but yeah. Yeah. Nope, I didn't say anything about that, just saying. <laughs> yeah. Just clarifying there was a dog with a person, that's all I was doing. Right, okay. yeah. This so then he instructed me to d declare the second dog Potentially dangerous. Okay. So here's something I really don't understand, and I'm not, I wasn't there. I went and met with Tucker after to make sure his dogs were on a leash uh, in the yard, muzzled up, all that kind of stuff. Um, were they? I'm just curious. Yeah, yep, they were. They both were chained up on a, on a thing. and In a proper enclosure. They were chained, yeah, I guess completely chained in his private residence, whatever. I, yeah, I, I don't. I, so that's what I saw. When they're outside of the residence, are they in a proper enclosure? Do they have a dog house and water? 
I'm not an animal. I was when I showed up there. The the one there was one dog outside, and the little dog was inside the house. The German Shepherd was outside, so one of them was in and and on a muzzle. Um, got a police report. It's crazy to me that an officer would be there. You have a police report that says a different dog than what has now came to be, which is crazy to me. And then now all of a sudden we're trying to add a second dog to a dangerous thing. I just, as a township member, not being there, not seeing anything, I don't know who the court of law to hear this stuff, but I would trust the cop first. So it's, it's crazy. I, I just find it because Tucker's saying it's one dog. The victim Tucker was not different. there. Nope. I, but neither, nobody else was. So all I, all I'm saying the is victim the victim and the two witnesses were there. Yep. They all say two dogs. So how did when I spoke to the police chief, she said she understood that there was confusion at the time. Yeah, I, and I, that all, it's just crazy to me then, and I think it's really poor policing what came out of it. If literally an officer is on site, you have everyone there, and they come up with the wrong dog and not even two dogs. It's, that, that's the only thing that I'd say, and I, whatever happens, I'm not any part of it. I wasn't there. It's just sad that we live in a day that an officer's on site and then we're dealing with all this stuff. So. I think the victim was gone already to the hospital. The police came after. So if it was uh, any other incidents, I mean, is that policing that you really want? Like they can't even get to the bottom of a dog bite? Exactly. That's pretty, like, scary, if you ask me. I, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure if, if you want to get into the topic of the effectiveness of the police department that we currently have on contract. <laughs> yeah. There will be a lot more than that. that was, so that was something I wanted to ask with Washington County when we move forward. Is there going to be an animal thing available? Or is no, that still something you they still don't do contract? animal okay. control. All right. No. So we don't have animal control officer anymore? Correct. Okay. An animal control officer is different than an animal control authority. An animal control authority is actually of the township or or you're saying that if somebody gets mauled down here like what happened there the sheriffs aren't going to show up oh yeah i mean they'll come and write oh. a police report okay but it's up to the township to have an animal control th authority to go make sure that for yeah. example, Mr. Andrews received a dangerous dog notification to make sure he is following the guidelines for a big, uh, dangerous dog. Why weren't they put into quarantine? That's normal, 10-day quarantine. I, don't, I didn't get that either. So we don't have, apparently, we, we found out, and I, I would assume as a board member, when we have St. Paul Police under contract, that they would have all yeah. that stuff. So the situation happened when apparently we had no which is crazy. If something happened in St. Paul Park, you'd assume that would happen. I shouldn't be the one going out and, is this thing a legit closure or not? It's really kind of a, you know, it's something we shouldn't even be a part of. Okay. So that's what, when we land our next contract, we need to know when we got too many animals, who's gonna come just pick them up so we don't have to be involved. Like, who do you just call for that stuff? Or this happens, who takes them until they figure out the situation? We have to really ask a lot of questions, I guess, and figure out what we need to have in there. I, I, I would assume we had it, but. Apparently we don't have any of that. Well, don't we? <clears throat> don't we have it in the ordinance? What's supposed to happen to the dog right away? It's though? right here. But yeah. who enforces it? Like that's where. Well, well yeah. if we don't okay. have uh, a. Uh, we got the ordinance. Just yeah. nobody did. <laughs> right. It doesn't do us any good. We found yeah. that out. If we don't have an animal control authority, then is it the town board? Is that what it says? It doesn't say that. What is that just for declaring? Like, I thought our scope would be declaring a dog dangerous or writing a thing like Cheryl did. Well, I, think, I think the town board is the animal control authority. That's yeah. That's different than the officer. Yeah. So you have to have somebody. And I can't believe St. Paul Park doesn't have, because if you get a dog by they the state, state, I they think he quit. Take care of he quit. I, I, I think he quit. <laughs> well, then what are they doing? Well, their, <laughs> their community services officer quit that's the one that did like if you haven't licensed your dog then they would um issue a citation they are not replacing it they've eliminated the position because they've had to cut their budget i have to turn it on that because i can't believe a city that size does not have an animal control 
somebody else would be covering it now. I mean, obviously, that stuff happens all the time in St. Paul Park. But I feel like it's a little cat and mouse they're playing with us. But. Right. Well, can't, can't say. I think we have enough information to declare those two dogs as potentially dangerous. But they've already been declared. By? Township. By the township. Yeah. Someone needs to go out and verify whether the dogs are in a proper enclosure. They're still not licensed. He sent me the vaccination records, but has not sent me the application form or the fee, so they're still not licensed. Um, he was issued a citation for that in January. And he has three dogs. Right. I can't imagine a citation was cheaper than $27 for yeah. three dogs, but. And now he has about 500 cats. He has to collect fees on cats. No. Have they checked with the veterinarian to make sure that that is a legit certificate for rabies? Um, the original one that he um, gave to me was not, <laughs> but he has since had them vaccinated. But, yeah, but when were they vaccinated? After? After. 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 Oh, my oh, my God. They should have been in quarantine for 10 days. What is wrong with this police department down here? I don't get that. That's really bad. I hope she sues the pants off of them. Oh, I'm sure she will. There's kids in the neighborhood. Seven kids that live next door to them. Yeah. And the dogs already killed chickens. It's like, ugh. You know? So we probably need to find an animal control or somebody. I mean, we're not capable of like, what are we? What are we supposed to do? Go take them and put them in enclosure? Who, t who takes them if they're not? Or how? You know, that's not really. Is that the town board scope of work? Walk over there, Paul, and leave with two dogs and do something with them, or what? So what are we supposed to do tonight? Well, I mean, what? What? Do, no. Or is this just any, information? Do we, information. One. Do we have any volunteers? Two. Does somebody want to start looking into Does Washington how to County go about any... getting an animal control authority in the township? I wonder if they have any recommendations or people that work with the county already that... I feel like it'd be nice to have a third part, outside party, I guess, is what I feel like would be... Well, there is this place that does animal control, um, you know, that I got pricing from. I don't know that they would consider themselves animal control authority. No, they're not the authority. Right. The it's the authority, which is the town board, can hire them to be the officer. And every town, I believe, has a, uh, a designated dog pond where, where they're right. directing. Right. We use South St. Paul. Whatever it is. And right. You can also contact that, that dog pond and ask if they know of people who would serve as an And they're probably so going to want sure. a police escort. Yeah, exactly. police to meet them in there. Yeah. Can you revoke a dog license? Dog license? Wasn't that he has to get his dog license, right? Well, he doesn't yeah. have him license. So. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing to revoke. <laughs> I know. I have to get insurance now for dangerous dogs. Right. Dogs. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. And. <coughs> so have so we we gave him we gave him the. We gave them the full statutes of what like is required, but that's like all, yeah, who goes to check on that, who verifies that, who does that. Like that's what you need, a uh, administrative group that just deals with the animal. Officer to check on. Yeah, and off, yeah. As far as checking on the dangerous dog insurance, that could be something that's important if it would be. Don't you? Where does it say he has to have dangerous dog insurance? I didn't see that's that. Part of Minnesota law. Oh, it is? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And it was, um, it was mentioned in the email from Chief Danberg. Now, just, now, these might not even be accurate, but I just looked today. St. Paul Park's got an animal control officer phone number. Don't mean it's accurate because it was on the Internet. Cottage Grove's got a complaints for domestic animals. I didn't call any of them. 
and Denmark Township has got a number here to call. Now, I don't know, if, you know, they this might guy, not be accurate they? anymore, but, you know. Doesn't Denmark use that single guy or whatever? I don't know who they, I don't okay. know who they use for it. Does somebody want to look you, into this? Do you want to call those numbers, see what's on the other end? I can. You want me to see what I can find out what these other people are using? Yeah, and I can give you this, and you can check with them, see if, yeah. Yeah, I'll call around, see what other people are doing, what they're, what other cities and towns are doing. Like Gordy said, I can't believe St. Paul Park, Cottage Grove, somebody's got a vicious, mean dog chewing on somebody. They don't have a way to take care of it. Yeah, I mean, you just don't. Yeah, we don't have an animal control officer. You're gonna have to fend for yourself. You know, that's, yeah. And you were told that wasn't in our police contract. That's why we don't have that service. That's basically what we got told. Like what we were paying for. It's a. I was told that animal control authority lies in the township. The authority does. Yeah, animal control officer. Right, and I would have to look at our contract. It's in here. So if it's that way, would we have the authority to have them go check, like to see how the dogs are? They're not the authority. They're an officer. No, but if we're the authority, is that would they be our acting officer that we're paying the hundred grand a year for right now? Um, I suppose if you show up with them it, and you're the one going to do the enforcing. Yeah, I don't get it. Does anyone know how any of that? <laughs> Why don't you take a look at that, that contract we right. got with them, and I'll call you right. tomorrow and see where we're at, because okay. that's the first place to start, I would think. What would you recommend to somebody then if they got a bunch of cats coming in their yard nonstop and you got nobody to call? Most, most of besides, <laughs> besides what you can't say. <laughs> like a 22? Some rehoming? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what you get animal, called. Animal right? arc. Yeah. yeah. Will they come in and capture them or do they expect you to capture them? Well, they get captured quite often. They just don't know what to do with them after they get captured. Oh, okay. I'd probably just drive a little ways away. But we'll leave that for discretion. Well, I think they were all uh, outside wild cats and then started feeding them, and then they'd breed because nobody gets them fixed or anything. So it's, yeah. Yeah. But they all cope up there. Does our dog thing have anything about our animal thing have stuff about other animals in there or is it just dogs no no there's other animals but not cats no do you have leave tags on your animals so we know it's a animal or not? i'm pretty sure they're pets we didn't have cats before we came well, i know he Honestly, when i when I dealt with them with the other stuff, it was like one or two cats would show up and he's like, oh, these been around. And so they, he'd leave like little milk and stuff out. So then I'm sure they all started breeding and there's a lot of them. Well, you must see them by your house then, don't you? No. He's feeding them good enough they stick around. So, um... Here's a couple interesting things. The dog has to be registered. He'd have to register two of them. And then he'd have to supply us insurance of certificate for two dogs to, to keep them. And this is all once they're deemed potentially dangerous, right? Yeah. 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 And we did that. Already. And don't they have to have uh, the They have to have a microchip? Yep. Yeah. Didn't you do all that, Dan? He had to do it within 14 days or 10 days. And I, I'm pretty sure he had appointments for the microchip. I don't know if we got that to the township. I'm oh. pretty sure he was going to get a microchip too. but One or two? The Both of them. Three. He has three dogs. Well, I know he has three, but well, he only has to legally do the two. Well, the two were involved in the incident. For the yes. microchip. In the disaster. He, and he got them all up to date. Yeah. He'll have to get them all licensed, yes. Yep. 
This is just for the microchip. And, and I think stuff. he did get them um, rabies shots, didn't he? I'm pretty everything's, sure. Everything's up to date now. Yeah. 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 After, well. Because we got copies of that. There's a lot of things that got missed. And that should actually come from the uh, Department of Veterinary Services of Minnesota. Yes. And the I'm sure he didn't tell this vet that the dog last yeah. week had attacked somebody. Yeah. I know he didn't tell him. Um, otherwise, they would have they would have taken the dog and checked for rabies. That means cutting its head off. He's digging his cell phone. He's yeah. Cool. yeah. He doesn't care. He doesn't, this is nothing basic. He don't care. I don't know when. Oh, no. It's, it's happening. <laughs> okay, are we done? Yep. I, other. We got other. Yeah, Any so other. we've got, we've got, you got other? No. No, I don't hit. Not tonight. Uh, we're in other right now. Okay. No, don't. <laughs> Um, so we're we're good on the dog thing. We've done our our part. Well, Dick's gonna check, okay. and I'll look at the contract. Okay, okay, thank you. But we're not good. No, we still need somebody to go. We still need an animal control authority to report back to the lawyer, to yeah. township attorney. Right. The status of the dogs. Well, see what you can find out. Okay. And if you come up with something, let him know right away and we'll get him on. So you need somebody to go over and talk to Tucker and see where he's at? Is that what it is? That would be great. Well, I mean, that's what they're, he's keeping right. them chained up, muzzled up. He's got his shots now, but yeah, what, so. How? So you're saying you need one of us to go over to his house and see what's happening? Is that what you're saying? Um, yes, the attorney wants to know. Well, I'll nominate, well, Oman. I'll nominate Oman, board member Oman. Well, I can already, so <laughs> I know he's in a, I, I, I don't think he understands because I know he got served papers or whatever. He's got a legal matter with, with the victim or whatever. Um, but I, I think he's in a thing where he thinks he's in compliance of those 10 or whatever, those the items with, within 14 days. So do we, how often do you have to check if they're inside Does, or not or what? Because I mean, okay. the attorney wants to know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Minnesota state statutes in our ordinance it defines a proper enclosure. If the dog is outside, it needs to be in a proper enclosure. So completely fenced. How with a? Yeah, it's defined yep. in the yeah. ordinance. Yeah. It's so it's look at the ordinance. Okay, go at, yeah. see if that's what's going on. Does yeah. he have the dangerous dog insurance? Are the dogs microchipped? What else is in there, Paul? There's uh, this thing is. Like 10 pages long. And, and it goes I back have and forth I, gave, I sent him all that stuff, so I'll print it out again. Um, and I'll go over there and check by check. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's well, here. It starts right here. The no. no. That's, that's right there's priority. It has to do right that there. too. So what, and that's what we've been dealing with for two years, three yeah. years? So what, what do we do? Yeah. We can't, I'm not taking those dogs to my house. No. I'm not, you know, like what we have. I, I, that's where I can't believe you just can't call St. Paul Park for 100 grand a year. This, it should have been handled. Like. It starts right there. So now would our code enforcement officer handle this in the future? Or no. 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 Yeah. Animals is totally different. Animals are separate from... Yeah. Okay. No. 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 Yeah. And then they have so many days to get them straightened out, get the license, do whatever okay. he has to do it, and then you can pay them back. Pay the fine, so, pay the pickup. So, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Motion's been made. And. Second. Can't second it. Second? Aye. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 aye.